The film begins somewhere in a large forest. When we see the apes walk before stopping and sense something, it is the hunters who speak in Swahili who are after the apes. They capture some and leave others in the forest. Then at Gensis, a genetic treatment pharmaceutical business. A female ape, Terry Notary, labeled number nine and nicknamed Bright Eyes by the staff, has been given the medicine ALZ-112 and has made significant improvement. She is more friendly and peaceful than other apes, and she completed the Towers of Hanoi problem in 20 moves, close to a perfect score of 15. Will Rodman, James Franco, speaks to his supervisor, Steve Jacobs, David Oyelowo, and convinces him that he has data that allows them to proceed with human testing for the treatment. The next day, Rodman and Jacobs appear in front of the Genesis board of directors in the conference room. Will adds that the new medicine induces neurogenesis, the formation of new brain cells, which does not normally occur after birth, and may treat a variety of degenerative brain conditions, including Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. The sole negative effect is that the medicine causes a green shine in the individual's eyes. Back in the lab, the senior ape caretaker, Robert Franklin, Tyler Labini, is having difficulty persuading bright eyes from her cage. She is violent towards Robert and the other aides. They try to coax her out of the cage with orange soda, but when they try to catch her with a lasso pole, she goes ape and runs wild around the building. The pursuit ends when she smashes through the conference room's glass window and the building's security personnel murder her. Jacobs declares the drug experiment dead, fearing that what they experienced with bright eyes was a drug-induced violent adverse effect. Will tries to persuade Jacobs to alter his mind, but he refuses, stating he wants the remaining test apes put down. Robert returns to the lab and shows Will a newborn ape hiding in bright eyes cage. This explains why their presumption was incorrect. Bright Eyes was not responding aggressively because of the drug, but to defend her infant. Robert did not have the heart to put down the infant and delegated the responsibility to William. Unwilling to do so, he chooses to bring the infant home. Will comes home and lives with his father, Charles, John Lithgow. Charles has Alzheimer's and requires care from a nurse when Will is not there. Will introduces the newborn ape to Charles, who quickly takes a fancy to it. Charles jokingly refers to the infant as Caesar. Caesar quickly makes extraordinary development, able to feed himself after just two days. He appears to have caught the virus-based LZ-112 from his mother. His temporary residency with Will lasts three years, and Will makes up a place for him in the attic. Though ape-like in certain aspects, the now half-grown Caesar, Andy Circus, is a loving family member who communicates complicated thoughts via sign language. While Caesar's mental development is improving, Charles's Alzheimer's disease worsens, and he disagrees with his nurse. Will takes a significant risk by stealing ALZ-112 from Genesis. He administers a dosage to Charles, and the next day, Will discovers his father playing the piano flawlessly. Meanwhile, Caesar has been enthralled with watching the neighbors play outdoors and escapes through the window into their neighbor's backyard. However, Caesar's arrival frightens the neighbor's daughter, causing her father, Hunziker, David Hewlett, to assault him. Will and Charles successfully rescue Caesar, but not before Hunziker injures him. Will sneaks Caesar into the zoo for treatment. Caroline Aranya, Frida Pinto, a veterinarian, treats Caesar there. Caroline is captivated by Caesar's knowledge of sign language. He even suggests that Will and Caroline go out to supper using sign language. To quell Caesar's restlessness, they transport him across the Golden Gate Bridge to a redwood grove for some outdoor play. When Caesar arrives in the woodland, he does not leave Will but instead makes a supplication motion by extending his arm, palm up, to ask for permission to play. Will permits him and Caesar goes to the trees. Five years later, Caroline has joined the Rodman family and Caesar has grown. Will has even begun dressing in a shirt and jeans. 
During a walk to the wilderness, Caesar is aggressively yelled at by a dog, and he responds with a primal howl that drives it away. Will senses Caesar's sadness and confusion over who he is. They drive by Gensis and will tell Caesar about the medicine that increased his intelligence, as well as the loss of his mother. Charles's health has deteriorated over the last five years following receiving ALZ-112. Will believes that his immune system has created antibodies and that a more aggressive virus is required. Will takes a risk by going to Jacobs, disclosing his secret experiment with his father, and explaining that the medicine not only heals brain impairment but also makes people clever. He claims he has altered the virus and requires Jacobs to allow new animal tests. Back at home, Charles becomes disoriented and goes outdoors, into their neighbor's automobile. He tries to drive it but damages it. Hunziker, the same neighbor who assaulted Caesar, yanks Charles from the automobile. In his deranged state, Charles is unable to express his motives for being there. Caesar watches from his attic window, and when he sees the neighbor cursing and aggressively shoving Charles, he runs out of the home. He assaults Hunziker, knocking him to the ground, leaping on him, beating him, and eventually chewing off a finger. Charles recognizes Caesar and exclaims, Caesar, no! Caesar backs off and approaches Charles. Animal Control transports Caesar, by court order, to a primate sanctuary following the incident. Will and Caroline walk him in and say their goodbyes. During Caesar's first days in the sanctuary, he finds it difficult. It is operated by John Landon, Brian Cox, with animal care overseen by his short-tempered and aggressive son Dodge, Tom Felton, and a timid guy named Rodney, Jamie Harris. When Caesar flings his food at Dodge and laughs, the young guy responds violently by turning on a fire hose, sending Caesar to retreat into a corner of his cage. When Caesar is released with the other animals into the main play area, he meets the group's dominant male, an ape named Rocket, also Terry Notary. Rocket rips off Caesar's shirt and beats him. Caesar also notices a gorilla named Buck, Richard Ridings, in a confined cage and an orangutan across from his cage who talks sign language. Caesar quietly begins to interact with Maurice, an orangutan, Karen Conoval. The sanctuary sends 12 apes to Gen Sis to test the latest version of ALZ-112, which is called ALZ-113. Will is once again in charge of the testing, and his first subject is a pretty frazzled ape named Koba, Christopher Gordon. Koba is tied down and administered the new medication via a breathing mask. However, Koba resists and the hose falls off the machine. Almost everyone in the lab wears a breathing mask, save Robert, who gets accidentally exposed. That night, Will brings some ALZ-113 home to treat his father. Charles refuses therapy and dies that night in his sleep. After Will and Caroline finish packing away Charles's remaining items, Will notices a copy of Julius Caesar. Dodge eventually leads several of his buddies into the sanctuary's cage section, where Caesar steals a pocket knife from one of the guests. Caesar befriends Buck, the giant gorilla in the yard who is never allowed out of his cage, by releasing him out. He then releases Rocket, who wanders into the yard. Caesar attacks him with a steel gas can. Rocket is prepared to fight, but he knows that Buck is dedicated to Caesar and would protect him, so he surrenders. Caesar is now the alpha male. Caesar eventually lets Rocket out of the cage and enables him to distribute stolen cookies, from Dodge, one to each monkey, bringing the group together. Caesar has also discovered a walkway and controls for the windowed cage at the top of the play area. Will returns to work and discovers that Jacobs has shamelessly and carelessly pushed the research timeline forward. While Jacobs is primarily concerned with economic earnings, would tell him that the most pressing issue is how the newer ALZ-113 would affect humanity. Will departs Gensis as Jacobs refuses to listen to his concerns. Meanwhile, Robert has been suffering virus-related side effects such as sneezing, 
which causes blood droplets to emerge from his sinuses. Will returns to the monkey sanctuary and tries to bribe John Landon into letting him keep Caesar. John is eager to do so, but when Will persuades Caesar to accompany him, Caesar declines. That nightfall, Caesar bursts out through the window he discovered and returns home. He grabs ALZ-113 from Rodman's refrigerator and delivers it to the apes at the preserve. The next day, John Landon witnesses the apes holding a discussion. The apes scatter and play it off. Landon dismisses it as odd. That night, the apes return to their cages, but Caesar refuses, confronting and defeating Dodge in the yard. When seized, Dodge exclaims, Take your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty ape. Caesar talks audibly, for the first time, exclaiming, N.O. No! The second caretaker, a witness, rushes into the cage area, attempting to save Dodge, who is now comatose. The apes assault him, but Caesar calls them off and, as a gesture of kindness, places him in Caesar's cage. Dodge attempts to flee and is slain. He's carrying a cattle prod, and Caesar strikes him with the fire hose. Will phones Caesar in the morning, but there is no response. Driving there to investigate, he discovers the facilities destroyed, the apes missing, and the ALZ-113 canisters open in the cage sections. He chooses to sound the alarm. Meanwhile, the apes make their way across town. Caesar separates them into two groups. Buck travels with one group to the zoo to free the apes, while Caesar takes the other group to Genesis. Robert goes to Will's house to talk to him, but Will is not present, and Robert is confronted by Will's irritable neighbor, Hunziker. Robert, startled, sneezes on him. Later on, a lady in Robert's building discovers his death. Jacobs, who has just arrived at work, learns about the ape escape. He discovers that Caesar and the other apes have taken over the building, freeing the 12 ALZ-113 test subjects. The cops are called in. Jacobs boards a police helicopter as Caesar and Buck's groups join forces, numbering between 50 and 60 chimpanzees, orangutans, and gorillas. However, the apes appear to be deliberately averting the deaths of the people they encounter. Will and Caroline have heard about the rampage, and after discovering that the apes are on their way to the Golden Gate Bridge, they believe Caesar is leading them to the Redwood Grove. The officers are waiting on the bridge to fire on the apes, but Caesar once again separates his forces. One group climbs the suspension cables, while another swings from the structure's underbelly to bypass the blockage. In the helicopter, Jacobs notices Caesar and tells the soldiers to kill him, assuming that Caesar's death will deter the others. However, when the helicopter approaches the bridge, Buck climbs upon it, bringing it down at the expense of his own life. Caesar is saddened by the death of his colleague and soon discovers the helicopter's remnants hanging to the side of the bridge, with Jacobs crying for aid. Instead, Caesar looks aside, and Koba pushes the chopper off, killing Jacobs in contact with the ocean. The apes move into the jungle. Will and Caroline, meantime, have made their way across the bridge. Will takes a police vehicle and escapes to the wilderness. He invokes Caesar's name but is confronted by one of his followers. However, Caesar soon emerges and the others retreat. Would try to reconcile with his pal, saying that if Caesar came home with him, he would protect him. Caesar surprises Will by embracing him tight and saying, Caesar is home. Will watches Caesar and a few other apes climb into the trees to observe the jungle and the world beyond. In the aftermath, we witness Will's neighbor Hunziker report for duty as a pilot at San Francisco International Airport. As he goes towards his jet, he notices that he is bleeding from his nose. As the camera pans up, we observe digital boards blinking to various destinations, indicating that these locations will soon be infected with ALZ-113, sealing humanity's doom.